Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to solve 1986 IMO problem number one, and the problem has been already written on the slide. And this is a problem based on number theory. In this problem, we have given a positive integer d, which is not equal to any of two, five, or thirteen. And we have to show that uh, one can find distinct a comma b. In the given set having four elements two, five, thirteen, and d, such that a b minus one is not a perfect square. Okay. So in the first line, what we have given uh, d be a positive integer which is not equal to two, five, or thirteen. I think that this condition is very much inherent because there are uh, we have given a set having four element two, five, thirteen, and d. And if this set is four element, then it is clearly understood that a d. Is not equal to any of two, five, or thirteen because uh, whenever we uh, represent a set, then there are two basic restrictions. Uh, number one, uh, number one, a repetition of element is not allowed, and second, the internal order of element does not matter. So the condition uh, first line is very much obvious and inherent. Now, what we have to show that uh, we have to show that uh, there exist two element in the given set uh, a comma b in such that a b minus one. Is not a perfect square. So, uh, in the, in the given set, we have given uh, four element, and we have to select two element. Uh, there are four element in the set. Three elements are known. One element is unknown. Uh, so we can select two element out of these four element in six ways. So there are uh, six combination exist of this type. So I am going to check some initial combinations. If we take a as two and b as five, then two into five minus one is nine, which is clearly a perfect square. Uh, and if we we take v a as two and b is thirteen, two into thirteen minus one that comes out to be twenty-five, which is again a perfect square. And if we take uh, five and thirteen, then clearly five into thirteen minus one is sixty-four, which is again a perfect square. So. Uh, three combinations out of six uh, are perfect square. Now uh, I am focusing on the rest three combinations, uh, which are 2d minus one, 5d minus one, and 13d minus one. Okay. Now according to the problem, we have to show that uh, uh, all these three combinations. All these three combinations are not perfect square simultaneously. That is, there exists a combination. Uh, there exists at least one combination which is not a perfect square. So I am going to prove this problem by the method of contradiction. So initially, we suppose that all uh, three uh, terms are perfect square. Uh, suppose 2d minus 1 is something like uh, uh, n square. 5d minus 1 is also a perfect square l square nlm newton's law of motion n square l square m square okay now look at the first term 2d uh, 2d is always even and if 2d is even the whole quantity 2d minus 1 is always odd and if the left hand side is odd this directly implies n square must be odd and if n square is odd then definitely n is odd And if n is odd, so we can suppose n equals to something like uh, 2n1 plus 1. We can write 2n1 plus 1. Therefore, uh, we can write uh, this relation as 2d minus 1 is equals to n square. But n is what? 2n1 plus 1, which is equals to 4n1 square plus 4n1 plus 1. This implies 2d is what? 4n1 square plus 4n1 plus 2 implies d equals to 2n1 square plus 2n1 plus 1. Yeah, d is something like that. Now uh, look at uh, these two terms. Uh, clearly, the sum of these two terms is even. And if this sum of these two terms is even, then the, this whole sum becomes odd. And if this whole sum is odd, then we can say that d is odd. There's a very important information. D is odd, and I am going to use this information here and here. 
since d is odd we have proved that d is odd and if d is odd then 5d minus 1 5d minus 1 clearly this quantity becomes even and if this is even implies l square is even and also if d is odd then 13d minus 1 also becomes an even integer and if this is an even integer implies m square is even l square is even implies l is even here m is even if l is even so we can suppose l equals to something like 2l1 and m is something like 2m1 okay now <coughs> move to the next slide uh, i can uh, also write uh, these two lines in the next slide uh, 5d minus 1 5d minus 1 becomes 4l1 square and 13d minus 1 uh, can write uh, 4m1 square okay now i am going to subtract these two equations 13d minus 5d can be written as 8d this is equals to 4 times m1 square minus l1 square 4 to the 8 so this will implies 2d equals to what 2d equals to m1 minus l1 into m1 plus l1 okay now now look at the left hand side of this equation a left hand side is 2d but d is odd we have proved that d is an odd positive integer and if d is odd then definitely 2d is even 2d is even but 2d is even but d is odd so uh, we can uh, uh, we can say that uh, 2d is a even number of kind uh, which is divisible by 2 but not by 4 this is a number of kind which is divisible by 2 but not by 4 okay but uh, look at the right hand side uh, the right hand side there are two factors m1 minus l1 and m1 plus l1 and we know that these two factors are of same parity these two factors are of same parity same parity means either both factors are even or odd simultaneously and if uh, one factor is odd then the other factor is also odd so product becomes odd but left hand side is uh, even so we get a contradiction here uh, uh, so uh, for, for this uh, to become this statement true uh, it is necessary that uh, on the right hand side uh, at least one factor must be even and if one factor is even then we can say that both factors become even because uh, both uh, factors are of same parity uh, left hand side is even therefore it is necessary that rhs must be even and if one factor is even then all other factor also becomes even first factor is even second factor is even and both factors are even then we can say that right hand side must be divisible by 4 uh, but uh, look at the left hand side left hand side is even but it is clearly divisible by 2 but not by 4 whereas rhs is divisible by 4 so we get a contradiction and if we get a contradiction it means that our initial hypothesis uh, was wrong and hence there exists at least one factor which is not a perfect square hence we are done thanks for watching